You want to be a better developer, right? Of course you do. I do too. I've been at this for 20 years and I do too. But how do we become better developers? Well, one of the ways is to write clean code. And even if you're a beginner, you really should be striving towards writing clean code. So in this video, I'm going to show you five easy to implement principles that you should be following in order to write cleaner code. But before we get started, let's just be sure we understand what clean code actually means. By definition, clean code is code that is easy to read, easy to understand, and easy to change. Right, with that out of the way, let's look at principle number one. The dry principle, which means don't repeat yourself. The dry principle really just means don't write the same code more than once. Instead, you should be extracting common functionality into a single piece of code and then reusing that over and over. The benefits of this, of course, are if you make, need to make a change to that functionality, you're changing it in the one place but the effects of those change are being felt across the code base. So I've got some simple code here uh, for two methods, one registering a user, one updating the user. Both of these share the same functionality. We have an if statement checking the length of the name, and we have a very similar if statement checking the length of the name again in the user method. This should be screaming to us that we are duplicating the code. Let's just say we wanted to check that the length of the name is suddenly greater than three, we'd have to change it in two places. So we should extract that into its own function, make a new method called isValidName, and then instead we should just call that is valid name in both those places. Principle number two is keep it simple, stupid. This principle just states that you should try and keep your code as simple as possible and avoid overcomplicating the solution for whatever it is you're trying to solve. This tends to be easier said than done when it comes to more advanced engineers. As we become better software developers, we tend to want to over-engineer everything. This happens for a couple of reasons. We either want to future-proof it, we want to show off our fancy design patterns that we've learned. We're always looking for that perfect, elegant solution, when sometimes just a simple thing will solve the problem. Balancing advanced skills with the KISS principle often means recognizing a simple solution sometimes provides more value than a sophisticated solution. That leads us to our next principle, YAGNI, which means you ain't gonna need it. This is another one that seasoned developers can often learn from some of the more junior programmers. YAGNI encourages us just to write the code that is necessary to solve the problem we need to solve and not add all this extra functionality that we may need in the future. This one is more for the time related things. If you're in a deadline or work environment, you shouldn't be adding stuff just for the sake of it. Often when we code for ourselves, we wanna spruce up a class or make things a bit fancy just for us and because we want to, that's different. But in a time-based environment, you should be focusing on your specific requirement that is needed right now and not get bogged down with things that you may need in the future or fun functionality that possibly may never come. So let's just take a simple example where you've been tasked to add two numbers together. You could easily just write a calculator class that just has a single method that says calculate sum, but you may find yourself quickly thinking, well, I've got a calculator class, I really should create methods for subtraction, multiplication, and before you know it, you end up having a class that looks like this. You've wasted all that time writing this fancy calculator class that has a whole bunch of methods which likely will never get used anyone in the future. That brings us to the principle of least surprise. This principle says that you should write your user interfaces and your APIs and your software components, whatever it is, you should write them in a way that they are intuitive to whoever's using them. We want to try and avoid surprising our user by the way something works. Code that breaks this principle most of the time just ends up doing more than what we expected it to do. But you can go so far as where code is actually lying in what it does. It's nothing worse than having the name of something where you read the name, you're expecting it to do this, and then you look at the implementation and you find out it's actually doing something completely different. So an example of this, let's have a look. We have a file handler that has a method called process file and takes a file path. What would you expect this piece of code to do? In this instance, we're checking the file path. If it exists, we're deleting the file. Otherwise, we're creating a file. It's bizarre, it's confusing, it's surprising that it would do this. In this version, the code adheres to the principle because we have two separate methods that are aptly named, telling us exactly what each of those methods do. There's no surprises here. None of the code is lying to us. Alrighty, moving on. 
SLAP stands for Single Level of Abstraction Principle. SLAP suggests that we should write each method with a single level of abstraction. And that just means that a method should deal either with high level operations or low level operations, but not at the same time. Low level operations are code that is really close to the hardware, anything that deals with things like network infrastructure or database calls, that is low level, whereas high level operations might be business logic. By keeping the code to a single level of abstraction and a single level of detail, this keeps things modular and easy to maintain. So I have a simple piece of code here to illustrate this. We have a, a method that processes our order it checks some business logic to see if all the if there's items still in the order otherwise it throws an exception it applies some discount and then for each item in the order it saves that to the database this code has varying levels of detail and it has high level and low level operations involved the high level operations would be us outlining the status of the order and us applying the business level logic of applying the discount to the order a low level detail would be us checking whether there are items actually in the order or how we process each item in that order by saving values to the database. We could make this way easier to understand if we make our process order just a list of steps rarely that get performed, stating the status and delegating responsibility to our other methods. Here we individually extract each of the other methods which are more low level value including the processing of items. So while these principles are really simple and will get you on your way to writing clean code, you really also need to learn the solid principles if you're going to master writing clean code. You should, you should watch this video next that will tell you which of the solid principles are worth investing the time in and which are not.